a better way, a sustainable approach to the health of your teeth. Tonight's information can save your life. I'm Dr. Reed Winnick. And I am Tammy Kolschmidt, dental hygienist. And tonight's show is about? How to choose a sustainable dentist and sustainable dentistry. That's right. Dr. Winnick, tell us how you became a sustainable dentist. Well, Tammy, I had really no choice. About 15 years ago, I had many surgeries. And I was very sick, and I was bound to have more surgeries. And I was getting more and more fragile. And conventional medicine wasn't working. I had to find a better way. Along my journey, I developed a sustainable approach to save my life. And what I've done was I've applied that approach to, to dentistry. What I learned was that by taking the proper amount of water, having the right foods to eat, the right nutrients, exercising, diet, all the factors that everyone out there knows what's important to sustain in their own lifestyle and have strength in their own body, we can now apply this to the mouth. An important factor is that the body in the mouth isn't a machine, it's an organism, and that's how we should treat it. Right. I can, I can relate to that, absolutely. As a child, I was in and out of hospitals with upper respiratory diseases, and I was with conventional doctors and conventional medicine, which was great because they saved my life mm -hmm. many times. But as I grew, I realized I needed to find a better way. I needed to be able to sustain my health in between these bouts of illness. So now, I'm a registered dental hygienist, a medical intuitive, and an energetic healer. And that's what has helped me to find a better way. So you've basically taken it a step, approach or a step further by not just treating the disease, and the symptoms, but finding a way to sustain your body yeah. so it can heal on its own. Exactly. Very good. A lifestyle switch. Good. So an overview of tonight, uh, we will be talking about sustainable dentistry and how it differs from mm -hmm. conventional dentistry. W one of the things you need to know is that sustainable dentistry uses modern dental techniques and traditional healing. That's right. It's integrative. And, you know, as a sustainable dentist, we're also trained to be traditional dentists. The only difference is we've taken it a step further with hundreds of hours of continuing education, learning about nutrition and health and wellness, and then applying it to the practice of sustainable dentistry. Right, because your, your oral health is the gateway to your overall body health. That's right. Your, your mouth is like a barometer, yeah. and it foresees the future potential disease in the rest of the body. Exactly. So that brings us to choosing a sustainable dentist. My first question is, um, what are the different types of dentists? How do we see the differences? Well, you've got uh, probably five. You've got um, your general dentist who does like fix it, yeah. carpenter work. Fill and drill. Right. <laughs> you have your cosmetic dentist who are interested in Smiles. a pretty smile. Yeah. Um, you have your Gum, gum dentist whose primary goal is to uh, treat you with surgery. Right, gum disease. Um, you have your mercury-free dentist who understand that uh, mercury is a toxin and how to remove the fillings safely. Okay. You have um, a holistic dentist who understands more than just the mercury is an issue, but also what nutrients are important. And then you have a sustainable dentist which actually ramps it up and takes it a step further and understands the, the mind, body, spirit, and overall wellness and, and how to kick in the body's innate immune system so it can actually heal on its own. Right, very good. Okay, so within, within choosing these five dentists, um, you have to be very clear as a patient in your vision of what you're seeking. So. So when you go to interview your dentist, and mm -hmm. you should interview more than one, a good place to start is the front desk. Right. But before you even get to the front desk, how do you, how do you know who to call? So what we would suggest is you would um, do a search on the internet, um, look for either a holistic dentist, um, 
uh, mercury free dentist. Um, look for, um, uh, ask your family members or your friends, ask your nutritionist or your chiropractor if you have one. It's always great to get a referral from somebody who's already been to a sustainable dentist. Um, after you got that information, you know, you also want to think to yourself, well, why am I looking for a sustainable dentist, right? Right. So what would motivate someone to take that next leap to go out of the realm of regular dentistry and look for a sustainable dentist? What would they be asking themselves? Well, have they ever been told that they have gum disease? Right. That's the first one. And yeah, but oh. also, well, maybe they were told they have gum disease, but maybe they just don't want to have surgery. Right. A sustainable dentist has a non-surgical approach to gum disease, right. which we'll get into. Right. And um, mercury toxicity. Right. So if they heard that mercury was bad for them, they read it in the paper or whatever, um, it's just they want to get more information about it. So they would go in that direction. Uh, uh, one thing also with um, sustainable dentistry is digital x-rays. Mm -hmm. Digital x-rays are much better than the traditional film. And you'll know they're digital because you'll see your images up on a computer screen. Right. So they're concerned about getting more radiation. More radiation. Y right. Right. Um, and it's, digital x-rays is actually less, what is it, 90% less about, radiation. That's right. But they also, let's say they have, um, they have a, um, a wellness lifestyle as it is, and they now want to take it a step, le le a step further and apply it to their teeth. Remember, health doesn't stop at the neck. They have to, you realize it's one system and you want to find a dentist who understands that and appreciates that. So now they have all these questions and you have all these ideas of why you might want to cha change. The question is how do you find um, a true sustainable dentist who's really going to fit your needs? Someone who, who's actually higher up in the level and the knowledge that you're looking for so you know that you're finding yourself in the right place. A good place to start would be to interview the front desk because they know the, what's going on with the dentist. They understand his treatments. So if you get a good communication with the front desk and they seem to understand what your needs are, chances are you're in the right place. You, you just have to feel it out to know if what that practice does is in, in line with what your vision is for your health. Exactly. Do you want to deal with your teeth mm. only or do you want to deal with your teeth and your body? Right. And a sustainable dentist will do both. Mm -hmm. um, another thing when you go into the office, one of the things I love about our office is the environment. When you get off the elevators you kind of take a breath and it's refreshing. You don't smell acrylics. You don't smell cement. It's a very um, clean right. smelling environment. Well, when, we, when the office was built, we knew we would see a lot of chemically sensitive patients. Exactly. So we were very concerned about the smells, so we don't want any uh, problems with that. Even the staff in the office isn't allowed to wear perfume. Right. You know, but they all smell good, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> also, many patients would say to us, when they just walk through the door, you know, they feel so much at ease and calmer. Relaxed. And relaxed because we had a, um, a, a feng shui architect, architect design the space for us. Everything is also non-toxic, uh, green, recycled, sustainable materials. Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, when we did the insulation, uh -huh. uh, we used blue denim. Yeah, that's cool. Right. That's because cool. we're a green dentist also, <laughs> and that's important to us. It is. It is. The environment is very important. So uh, going beyond that, let's just talk a little bit about the non-surgical approach mm -hmm. to gum disease. Mm -hmm. When you talk about dentists who are gum dentists and they want to do surgery, one thing a sustainable dentist will try to do is preserve your mouth. They'll try to preserve your teeth and your gums without cutting. And for instance, if so, can you give us a little background on crown, inlay, onlay? Sure, uh, yeah. Because so that's preserving the teeth. Right, see what happens is if you have a big filling, many dentists might say, well, this needs to be crowned. But a sustainable approach would be, let, let's be more conservative. So instead of cutting the whole tooth down and covering it like with a thimble, you would just cut the top of the tooth off, which gives it still the same amount of strength, but you're putting like um, a top hat on the top of your head as opposed to a ski mask. So you're just 
preserving the bottom part of the tooth. So the tooth breathes. Right. So you're, you're maintaining the healthy circulation of the tooth. Right. It's, you, Im it's important for the tooth to breathe. It's a living entity. <laughs> it's better that it's not fully covered. Right. And that's just one example. There are so many more. Right. We actually have a, um, a report um, that you can call the office and get on how to choose a sustainable dentist. And it mentions everything we've just discussed and more things that we will be discussing later on tonight. Good. On the topic of toxicity, people are very concerned about mercury. Mm -hmm. So let's touch a little bit on if, if someone, if you think you're mercury toxic. Right. Well, for, first of all, mercury um, fillings, or people commonly call them amalgam or silver fillings. Why they call them silver fillings, I don't know. They're actually 50% mercury. And mercury is a toxin. Why you would want to put that in your mouth, I don't know. However, in order to be diagnosed as being mercury toxic or allergic to mercury, you need to go to a doctor. Your dentist isn't allowed to diagnose mercury toxicity. So um, it's always, that's one thing you must understand. However, if you are mercury toxic, then it's important to remove your, merc remove your mercury fillings safely. Um, many people would say, well, if you just take the mercury filling out, you'd get more toxic. But if, you're, if you do it safely, then you don't have that issue. Um, in terms of biocompatibility testing, what right. would that be? Well, biocompatibility testing is a way for you to find out if you're allergic to the materials that are in your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a blood test. It's a simple blood test. Right. And, and that's a big deal because you can have a lot of allergies and things going on in your body and you, it may not be food or pollution, it may just well be the teeth. The, uh, the restorative material that was used. Right, and it's very common it's for people to be allergic to all different metals. I re recall growing up when my mom would wear gold rings, um, and when she took, them all, took it off, her finger would be black. That's because there was other metals in the gold that she was allergic to. So being allergic to metals isn't something that's new. Um, I, I would also like to mention uh, insurance companies. Try, really try not to allow them to dictate your choices and also know your plan, research your plan because they may cover more than you know, more than you realize. Mm -hmm. right. So try not to let that be your, your guide. You right. have to do your research and get out there and find, find someone you trust. Mm -hmm.